Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So today we'll see a one more concept in compiler design that is left factoring. So in our previous session we have seen the elimination of a left recursion. So which will be not suitable for performing the top down parsing. Similarly, this is a one more case so if the grammar is in the form of left factored, then that production rules of the particular grammar will not be suitable for top down parsing. So here the left factoring is the process of transforming the left factored grammar to the grammar which is suitable for the top down parsing. So this is a process, right? So it is a process. of transforming left factored grammar left factored grammar to the grammar that that is suitable for parsing, particularly top down, right, top down parsing. So now the question is, what is this left factored grammar, right? So we are saying that if the grammar or the production rules are in a left factor, that will be not possible for or not suitable for this top down parsing. Now we will see what is the left factored grammar. So which type of grammar we will call it as a left factored grammar. So I will write here left factored grammar. So we know that the grammar will be a set of uh, terminals and the non terminals. So usually the terminals will be considered as a uppercase characters and the non terminals will be considered as a uh, sorry non terminals will be considered as a uppercase characters and the terminals will be considered as a lowercase characters. So we know that the grammar right. So if the production rules or the grammar will be having the common prefixes then we will call it as a left factored grammar. So here the production rules having common prefix common prefix then there will be a problem which production should be taken for a parsing so there is a dilemma of choosing the particular production for uh, expanding the production right so in such cases we will be using this I mean such grammar we will call it as a left factored grammar so, so not able to decide which rule should be used for expansion, for expansion because every rule will be having the common prefixes for example so for example if the grammar or the production rules are in this format so alpha beta 1 or alpha beta 2 alpha beta 3 and so on for example if the production rule is in this format okay so here you can see alpha can be and this alpha can be terminal, non-terminal, set of terminal and non-terminal. So anything it can be, right? So this alpha can be either terminal or non-terminal or a set of terminal and non-terminal. That is a combination. 
So, if all these rules having the same prefix, right? Whereas beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 is completely different. Okay. Beta 1, beta 2, beta 3 are completely different. That can be also either terminal or non terminal or the combination of both the terminal and non terminal, right? So, here the alpha is a common for every production rule. So, this type of grammar we call it as a left factor. So, in order for expansion, we, the, the, uh, we are supposed to have some sort of dilemma not to decide which production rule should be taken for the expansion. So, here we have to convert this left factor grammar to the grammar which is suitable for the parse, parsing, top down parsing. That means we have to eliminate this left factor grammar similar to our left recursion. So, which we have discussed in the earlier sessions. So, what we have to do? See, for example, if this is in this format, the production is in this format, take a one more production, right? So, take the common prefix alpha a dash and go with the a dash, move on with the remaining one, beta 1 or beta 2 or beta 3 and so on, right? So, we can convert the complete production, that means a left factor grammar by using these two. So, write down the common prefix into a new production, I mean new terminal, okay? So, new one and expand this a dash to all the remaining part of the production group. Okay, so hope you understood this one. And also we can write in different way. See, this is a first case. This is the first case. Okay, and if if the production rule is in this format, A goes with the alpha, beta 1 or alpha, beta 2 or uh, gamma 1 or gamma 2 or and so on. That means you can see only two production rules were having the same prefix whereas gamma 1, gamma 2 are not having the same prefix. You can see alpha. This is a common for the only this one. Now you can expand only this one. So A tends to alpha A dash or go with the remaining one gamma 1 gamma 2 and etc and expand a dash tends to beta 1 or beta 2 or and so on. So this is the second case. This is the second case. Okay. So this is a case 2 and this is a case 1. So here we are having all the production rules having the same prefix but here only some of the production rules are having the same prefix but remaining are unique. So then that should be written in this way, the same prefix, common prefix into a new uh, not terminal and followed by all the remaining unique uh, productions. Okay, so you will be understanding if we solve any example. Now we will move on with an example and I will explain. So see, uh, let us solve this example. So you can observe this is a production rule and here we are this both the production rules were starting with the same prefix so you can consider it as an alpha and this is, this is nothing but beta 1 and this is a alpha and this is a beta 2 so we know that a plus is also one terminal right so minus is also one terminal now how we can write so consider it as a a so e is equal to so that means e tends to the common prefix which is a t followed by a new non-terminal. So what is a new non-terminal? You can write it anything. So I'll write it E dash. So E dash can be written as the remaining part. So plus E or minus E. So this is the grammar. So which has been eliminated the left factored grammar. So this is a left factored grammar, grammar because the production rules having the same common prefix. 
So this we have eliminated by using this one. Okay. So hope you understood this one. Now we'll move on with the next one more example. So take a one more example. Here also there are the three production rules. Okay. Now you can see A, A, A. So all these three production rules were starting with the same prefix. And also we can move on with the set of terminals. See, uh, yes. You can also observe A, A is also having with a one more prefix. Okay, two production rules are having the common prefix or uh, if you take A, then all the three terminals were having the same prefix. So you can move on with the either, right? So let us take with the one terminal, one common terminal, because which is a common prefix for all the three uh, production rules. Now, how we can change it? So A tends to a common prefix A and let us write it as X as a new. Okay, X as a new. Now X can be written as the remaining thing. So A, B, or BC or AC. Okay. Now again, see this is a left factor grammar. This production is a left factor grammar because you can observe A, A. Okay. It's not mandatory that every production rule is having the common prefix. So that's what we have seen. So this is in the format A tends to alpha beta 1 alpha beta 2 gamma 1 so you can see only two productions are having the same common thing so this this is in this format now what we have to do so x tends to common thing a and y and y tends to try down the sorry also this one bc bc right so which doesn't have any common prefix now you can write it y is equal to b or c. Okay, so this is the nothing but the this is the elimination of left factored grammar. So this is the original. Now you can say so the result is a tends to a x and x tends to a y and b c and y tends to B, C. So this is the final output which eliminates, I mean after eliminating the left factored grammar. Right? So hope you understood. So it is not mandatory to have all the productions with the common prefix. So that is the second case. So previous example is for a first case. Only one, I mean all the productions are having the common prefix. And this is the second case. Now we'll see one more example, right? So let us see this one more example here. So we are having a three production rules and among these three production rules or two production rules are having the common prefix. Now what we have to do, so this is a common prefix and this is a common prefix. Now T tends to, uh, let us take the common prefix int and followed by a new production which is A a or and this doesn't have any prefix common prefix so we can write it in here in this way right int a a and inside the parenthesis e this is one uh, production now we expand a now you can see the star t is a one production and from this production what remains nothing that can be represented as an epsilon right so if completely written here, then it will be the epsilon. So this is a grammar after eliminating left factored grammar. So this is a common thing is int. So I have taken int and give the new production, write down the new non-terminal a and followed by the gamma one, which doesn't have any common prefix. So the same thing I have written here and then we have to expand the new uh, non-terminal a tends to write down the remaining terms in the production so star t as well as here we are taking a complete prefix so it will be epsilon right so hope you understood uh, and this process this process see now you can understand it's a process of transforming 
left factor grammar so this is a left factor grammar so this is a left factor grammar so transforming this left factor grammar to the grammar that is suitable for parsing so this left factor grammar is not suitable for parsing similar to our left recursion so that's why we are eliminating this left factor grammar okay so hope you understood this one we have seen a three different examples in different cases for case one case two and uh, for getting the epsilon here and now so consider this production consider this production and solve and eliminate the left factor grammar and transform to the grammar which is suitable for top down processing and post the result in the comment section okay so let's stop here and if you are having any doubts regarding this one feel free to post your doubts in the comment section definitely i will try to clarify all your doubts and if you really enjoyed my session like my session share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much